السلام علیکم و رحمتہ اللہ وبرکاتہ اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمده و نسلی علی رسول کریم اشہد و ان لا الہ الا اللہ و اشہد ان محمد عبده و رسوله I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship other than Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and final messenger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his peace and blessings on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and all righteous believers who follow in his path of the Siratul Mustaqeem until the Day of Judgment. Dear brothers and sisters, the blessed month of Ramadan is almost upon us. The time is coming nearer and nearer. And those amongst us who are eagerly waiting for it to arrive, for them the days seem even longer. The month that is going to be an opportunity for us to seek forgiveness from Allah because it is also known as the month of forgiveness. That opportunity is coming upon us again. This month is also referred to as the month of the Qur'an. The book of Allah. The speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was revealed in the month of Ramadan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what it is. That is the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself describes the Qur'an in many ways. And the foremost thing that he says that it is nothing but guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Guidance for all of mankind and all of jinn kind. It is a guidance for us all. It states all the rules and regulations that you need to live this temporary life of yours. And it teaches you a lot of discipline in life. It teaches you that you need to have discipline to pray to Allah regularly five times. It teaches you that you need to have discipline in paying of that zakat whenever it is due. It teaches you discipline to observe that psalm in the month of Ramadan steadfastly. It teaches you that you have to go on those pilgrimages of Umrah and Hajj with discipline. It teaches you to respect all the prophets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, sent from Adam alayhi salam till Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of course, there are other rules and regulations as well. And it all has to do with guidance. Right? Don't lie. Don't steal. Don't cheat. Don't harm others. Don't do any evil. Don't be jealous. A number of rules. And all those rules are set so that you can attain your paradise. A paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for you. Rules and guidance so that you can get there in the easiest way possible. Then there are also rules on morality. Right? In your dressing sense, dress in a modest way. In your speech, do not be vulgar. Control your tongue. Do not be immoral in your actions. Right? Do not have bad company. Rules and guidelines. Right? To discipline yourself in a number of ways. Various ways. So that you can have success in this life and the hereafter. That is the Quran, my dear brothers and sisters. People look at Islam and say, too many rules. Too many regulations. The fact of the matter is, yes, there are. There is no doubt. But what are they there for? They are there for to, to benefit you. To benefit us all. So that we can achieve what we need. To, so that we can be guided to the Siratul Mustaqim. So that we can attain Jannah. 
there are clear cut signs in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the earth, about the sun, about the moon, about the stars, about the universe. He tells us about animals, he tells us about the skies, right? He tells us of past generations that have gone by, various prophets that had come to those people. He also tells us about some aspects of the future, which are to come, which will definitely come. And he asks us to ponder our, on our own selves. How did you come into being? What were the different stages right from the time you were in your mother's womb? How did you come into being? Just ponder on that. Amazing the magnificence of the Creator. He has created in that way and then He's telling us what exactly how you are coming into being. Amazing. Then there are other guidelines. Do this, don't do that. Right? This is good for you, this is bad for you. We need that. If you have the guidelines only, then you can follow something, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also refers to the Quran as Al-Furqan. The criterion. Right? The Al-Quran, when you refer to it, it is something to recite. Right? It is something to recite. While Al-Furqan means something that distinguishes between good and bad. Right? Between good and evil. Right and wrong. It is beautiful. It is beautiful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can even describe the Quran in different ways. We could not have done that. Amazing is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, O people, what has come to you from your Lord is a reminder. A reminder from your Lord. Right? It is made up of a warning, but it is also a reminder. And it has in it cures of the diseases of the chest or of the heart. Right? Various diseases of the heart, in the chest, physical ailments, spiritual ailments, what may it be? Right? Mental ailments to do with your brain. There is shifa for all of that in the Quran. The cure is there in it in multiple ways. We need to understand that. Number one, your conviction and faith in Allah. That will definitely grow if your connection with the Quran is good. And that is where we need to understand. If your connection with the Quran is good, your connection is with Allah is good. And that faith keeps on improving. You inculcate in your own self a sense of calmness. Right? You are happy, you are content. You are not bothered too much about the materialistic world out there. Your faith is literally unshakable. Firm and strong. And the Quran gives you those necessary resources. So that you can achieve and become something like that. It tells you that past, it tells you the present, it tells you the glimpse of the future. It is truly a gift from Allah. The Quran itself is a gift from Allah. It is unfortunate that a lot of us fail to understand this gift from Allah. Brothers and sisters, the coming month, the month of Ramadan, let us make sure we are connecting back with the Quran. Let us connect back if for some reason or the other you have lost that connection. We are human beings after all. If that connection is not there anymore, let us connect back. What so many diseases that the Quran cures? Jealousy, envy, evil feelings in the heart. Cured. Recite the Quran. Allah gives something to someone and you desire it, right? You want that. That is jealousy, right? 
that is jealousy allah didn't give it to me allah gave it to him you are saying i don't like what allah has given to him nauzubillah think about it from this aspect you are actually thinking that what ever allah has given you the other person you are not happy with it i am not happy with the way allah distributes you are directly challenging allah jealousy is an evil disease my brothers and sisters be careful don't go down that path let us be always be pleased with whatever allah distributes to whomever see you, you can react in a way allah alhamdulillah you can pray to allah you can say oh, ya allah you have given it to him alhamdulillah please give it to me also make dua to allah ask for it you don't have to be jealous of that person and desire what he has like that slight difference in thought process but it, imp- it is important that we do that it is important that we think the right way it is important that we do not challenge allah's distribution we cannot afford to do that connect with the quran in the right way so that you are cured of these evils recite it beautifully understand the meanings implement what it says in your lives understand the broader rules and regulations and the benefits from them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us many things through the quran and this cure that i'm talking about about things that are obvious if somebody is jealous sometimes it just shows on the face isn't it but then there are other diseases that does not necessarily meet the eye you don't see it of the evil that is happening or the e- feel feelings that are happening to a person for example we have been told res- to recite ayatul kursi the ayah in surah al baqarah along with surah falaq and surah nas the last two surahs of the quran and what happens when you recite these it protects you from the evils that are unseen it protects you from the devil it protects you from the jinn kinds right there is you cannot see these evils happening to you but you can recite these to make sure that these evils never happen to you inshallah the repetition of certain surahs can cure you of things and it can have amazing results my dear brothers and sisters surah fatiha the opening surah of the quran amazing the dua that we recite day in and day out in every single rak'ah that we pray we are seeking something from allah through that dua right we are saying amin at the end of the verses of the surah fatiha you want it to be accepted you want it to be you want to be guided you want to get on to the sirat al mustaqim you want help from allah for that see according to some of the surveys it says even those people who do not believe in the quran even those people who are not believers who don't understand arabic they are also impacted by the recitation of the quran amazing are its effects it impacts the heart positively let us understand when they listen to that recitation of the quran in that beautiful manners of the reciters it helps them to calm down right and let us understand if the non believers are being affected so much by the quran how should you and i be affected are we taking it too easy if the non believers can be affected so much how much should you and i be affected think about it start inquiring about the meanings just like the non believers would do they listen to this beauty and then they are curious they come to you and or or to muslims and they ask what is being recited what does it mean that curiosity that pondering it sets them on the path of becoming believers subhanallah it's a way that allah subhanahu wa taala brings more people into the religion we are already in it 
how should it affect us ihdina sirat al mustaqim let it be a guidance for us the quran was definitely revealed for one and all it's not just for the muslims and if we are saying that we are true followers then let the quran affect you in that way in the way that it should affect the true followers allah says it is a guidance and it is a mercy for those who believe are we true believers do we truly want guidance and mercy through the quran do we believe in it think about it think about it now there are some people when you look at them you can literally say just by looking at them that these people surely have a connection with the quran right a sense of calmness in the way they approach things in the way they carry themselves you can see oh these guys something right there are some people of that sort i wish more and more of us are like that calm in nature not too worried about what this dunya has to offer living for that akhirah right not affected by the materialistic stuff not running behind those temporary desires of this world let the quran help you let us get our priorities right let us put the quran and allah and islam for the forefront of our priorities let us make sure we do that the quran tells us that spouses are supposed to be a means of mercy for each other are supposed to be a means of safety and security for each other that shows how you should behave with each other the quran tells us how you should behave with your parents it tells us how you behave with your family your relatives your children your friends it teaches you how to behave with one and all it teaches you how to enjoy good and forbid evil that's the quran it teaches you how to resolve matters and disputes it might not necessarily resolve the matter altogether when you follow it but at least you must try try it to resolve matters by the quran at least you can say i tried ya allah it's not that i didn't try try to do that brothers and sisters people are struggling around the world a lot of people are struggling around the world they don't have jobs they don't have food to eat they don't have clean water to drink they have lost loved ones people are falling into anxiety and depression as a result of it all turn to allah turn to the quran the solution the cure is there if we turn to the quran allah might change the affairs of one and all if we turn to allah if we learn to trust allah with our own affairs he will take care of them not just for you but for your the larger umma inshallah and when allah subhanahu wa taala says that you are going to meet your beloved ones in the hereafter believe it believe it have the conviction our brothers and sisters across the world are having that conviction they losing loved ones day in and day out and yet they say we will meet meet in, in paradise inshallah may allah help us to get to that paradise with ease when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to you via the quran listen listen and believe so that the calmness overcomes you it is unfortunate when some of the verses of quran are being recited people are not listening they are not attentive they don't realize the benefit of it all rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to love to listen to the quran he used to love it being recited by some of the sahabi and understand that it is only good for you whatever is mentioned in the quran and whatever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing to you in your lives you don't know and allah knows wallahu ya'lam wa antum la ta'lamun are you praying inshallah yes are you at least decent believers yes inshallah then let us not worry too much let us continue to be that believer continue to be that one who is praying regularly so that we are guided to the right path 
Amazing are the affairs of a true believer, is what Allah says. Amazing are the affairs of a true believer. Everything that happens to him is good. Everything that happens to him is good. Nothing bad, nothing bad at all happens to a true believer. Are we those true believers? When something good happens to you and you are a believer, be thankful to Allah and get closer to Him. When something bad happens to you and you are a believer, have patience and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And your better days will come. Sabrun jameelun, right? Patience is beautiful. Let it beautify you. Don't let stress kill you over time. Stress has an effect on people, right? It shuts you down slowly. It shuts down your organs slowly. Right? The diseases of this world start piling up. Don't stress so much. Let Allah take care of it, inshallah. Let Allah take care of it. When the Prophet ﷺ was listening to stuff that was being told to him from the non-believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him ayats to calm him down. And in one of those ayats, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, is telling the Prophet, and it's a lesson for us as well, that we understand that your chest is being tightened, meaning that stress, right? It is being tightened because of what you're hearing from the disbelievers. Now for us, it's being tightened for whatever reason. Right? But the concept is the same. It is tight, being tightened. You're feeling the stress. You want cure? Fasabbih bi rabbik. Declare the greatness of your Lord. Glorify your Lord. Wakum minas sajideen. And be amongst those who continue to do the sajda, who continue to fall in prostration. Believe in Allah. Have hope. Have hope in Him. And everything will be okay, inshallah. Every time you face a difficulty, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Right? We all are coming from Allah. We are going to go back to Him. Have sabr. Don't worry. There are many stories in the Quran of the past prophets of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of the difficulties that they faced. They were better people than us. Yet they faced so many difficulties. Every time you face a difficulty, understand that. They were better people and they faced such difficulties. What is it compared to what I am feeling? What is it compared to what I am going through? It's nothing. Allah will help you, inshallah. Don't worry. Continue to recite the Quran. Understand that it is your guidance, it is your cure for all the diseases that, that you are potentially facing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who are Ahlul Quran, Book of the Quran, people of the Quran. May Allah help us to continue to pursue the right direction. May He help us so that we are connected to the Quran in such a way that it stands at a witness, as a witness for us on the Day of Judgment. Allah alone knows how that will happen. But let us be a friend of the Quran in such a way that it is there standing for us on the Day of Judgment. Wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Break for sunnah now, inshallah.